بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. A presentation of Quran Sunnah educational programs. Visit us online at www.qsep.com. الإيمان بالملائكة Faith in the Angels الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله Today إن شاء الله the topic will be in regards to the faith and the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is one of the pillars of faith to have the right belief and the right faith regarding the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the faith in the angels includes many things, amongst which is to have faith in their true existence. And by this I mean angels as described in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are creatures which have bodies. They are not just spirits as many contemporary writers try to spread in their writings. It is true that the original creation of angels was from light as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in true hadiths. But they have bodies and some of those angels have so great bodies. Like the angel Jibra'il when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the cave of Hira he looked up and he saw the angel Jibra'il in his two nature. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I saw Jibra'il spreading his wings and he was filling the whole sky. Filling the whole sky. So how huge and how great was the angel Jibra'il Alaihi Salam when he was spreading his wings. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw the angel Jibra'il when he was ascended to heavens in Mi'raj. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw the angel Jibra'il in his true nature. Therefore, it is not enough just to say I believe in angels and when it comes to the details of your belief, we find that you almost just believe in the name without believing in what they truly are, how they are truly described in, in Quran and Sunnah. As I said in the beginning of this uh, session, that some contemporary writers uh, almost deny the existence of angels by saying that angels are the good spirits, you know, and the devils are the bad spirits. So they don't believe in true angels and they don't believe in true devils. You see? So this does not make someone faithful in angels. If he believes that they are only spirits, this does not make him faithful in angels. You have to believe in them as they are. Why did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said my Lord has gave me permission to describe to you one of those who carry his throne. Between his tip of his ear and his shoulder is seven, a distance of 700 years. That's one angel amongst those who are carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu is describing the distance between the tip of his ear and his shoulder to be 700 years distance. 
So how huge is this angel? This shows that it is meant for us to really have faith in the true nature of the angels. And we have to have faith in the angels according to what Allah says and according to what the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. And this is for all articles of faith. Otherwise, our faith will be short and it might be no faith. It might be equal to no faith at all. Devotion of the angels. Besides the faith in their existence, we have to believe that the angels are devoted to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They devoted themselves to that. Why? It is not because, as some people think wrongly, that they have no power to disobey or that they are forced to worship. This is not true. This is not true. They do not disobey Allah because of their great knowledge about Allah. They are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know much more about Him. And the more someone knows about Allah, the more fearful he becomes, the more loving for Allah he becomes, and the more worship he will do. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi inni la'alamukum billahi wa akhshakum lah. By Allah, I am the most knowledgeable amongst you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, I am the most fearful about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ It is those who know Allah, the scholars, who fear Allah. It is only those who know Allah that fear Allah. So, any scholar who doesn't fear Allah, he is not a scholar. Attributes of the angels. Alhamdulillahi fatir is samawati wal ard, jail il malai kati rusulan, uli ajiniha, mathna wa thulatha wa ruba. All praise be to Allah, the creator of heavens and earth, the one who made the angels messengers with wings. Two, three, and four wings, Allahu A'la. We mentioned earlier about the hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw Jibreel with 600 wings. With 600 wings. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives an example of how strong his angels are. He said, Inna arsalna alayhim sayhatan wahida fakanu kahashim al-muhtadir. Allah punished a certain people in the past by ordering one of his angels to punish them. He just shouted, صَيْحَةٍ wahida, one shout. And the whole city was upside down and everything was destroyed just by a cry or a shout from this angel. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Mecca and he was being harmed by the mushriks, an angel came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he told him, O Messenger of Allah, I am the angel of mountains. I am the one in charge of mountains. If you order me, I will make the people of Mecca like a sandwich. I will just bring those two mountains like this and crush them between those two angels. If you order me. So the Prophet Wasallam said, no. I hope that Allah will bring out guided people out of, out of them or out of their descendants. Yani, the Prophet Wasallam, due to his mercy, he wanted to give them a chance. 
to give them a chance and alhamdulillah that was good because they became Muslims and Islam was spread loving the angels Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Quran he who is an enemy to Allah and to his angels and to his messengers and to Jibreel and to Mikal which is Mikael then Allah is an enemy to all kafirs which shows that if you love Allah you have to love his angels there is no reason to say I cannot love the angels why why cannot you love them Allah loves them and they worship Allah constantly and they glorify Allah constantly this is in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is refuting the belief of the Jews because the Jews used to distinguish between some angels and others they used to say Jibreel is an angel of destruction so we don't love him and they used to classify angels and on this uh, based on this they used to hate some angels like the angel Jibreel السلام. so Allah is telling them if you don't love Jibreel and Mikael and all the angels you are kafir فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَدُوٌ لِلْكَافِرِينَ anyone who do not uh, believe in the angels of Allah and uh, loves the angels of Allah is not a Muslim he is a kafir functions of the angels angels assigned to the fetus the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the true hadith when the creation of the fetus is full in the womb of the mother Allah will send him an angel and he will be ordered by four words to write down his provision how long he is going to live what is his action going to be what is his fate happy or miserable and there are angels which are assigned to write down our deeds everyone has two angels which write his deeds as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٌ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ that two recorders one on the right one on the left whatever word you say you have an angel which is all watching all hearing writing what you say as a matter of fact the angels write down the intentions they write down your intention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs them because they don't know the unseen Allah informs them and they write down your intentions so when you do something and you intend to please Allah they will write that if you do it because you want to make people like you or any other reason they will also write that also angels which are assigned to take off lives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ the angel of death no name there is no name there is a popular name which is called Israel but there is no basis for this name in Quran or Sunnah there are some weak hadiths or weak narrations but Allah calls him here مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ the angel of of death but the angel of hellfire Malik is mentioned in Quran one angel and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says عَلَيْهَا تِسْعَةَ عَشَرَ that 19 angels are assigned to deal with the kafirs in hellfire 
19 angels. And they are mentioned to show how powerful they are, how strong they are. Upon hearing about the guardian angels of hell, the disbelievers sought to belittle their number and claimed that they would overcome them and escape the fire. Allah says, We have set none but angels as guardians of hellfire. We have fixed their number only as a trial for the disbelievers. So no one knows the greatness of these guardian angels of hell except Allah alone and the disbelievers will not be able to overcome even one angel. Hellfire itself will be pulled and brought on the day of judgment by millions of angels. Millions. Because hellfire is so huge, so big, we seek uh, refuge in Allah from hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, agreed upon hadith, يُؤْتَى بِجَهَنَّمَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَلَهَا سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ زِمَامِ مَعَ كُلِّ زِمَامٍ سَبْعُونَ أَلْفَ مَلَكٍ Hell will be brought forth that day by means of 70,000 ropes. Each will be held by 70,000 angels. So you multiply 70,000 by 70,000, you get nearly 5 billion, huh? Nearly 5 billion just pulling hellfire. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, uh, and in the other verse, Allah says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا No one knows how, man, how many are the soldiers of Allah, except Allah himself. There are some hadiths which show that with every drop of rain, there is an angel carrying it. This is to show how great is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Uttati al-sama wa huqqa laha anta it, ma min mawdi arba'i asabi' illa wa malakun sajidun lillahi ta'ala. The Prophet said, I can hear creaking of the heavens, and no wonder they creak, for there is not a spot the size of a handspan, but there is an angel on it, prostrating or standing in worship. Yani between every angel is only this much distance. So heavens are full of angels prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the heaven there is al baytul Ma'mur. al baytul Ma'mur is like the Kaaba on earth. Angels make tawaf around the Bayt al-Ma'mur. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Every day 70,000 angels enter al-Bayt al-Ma'mur and they never return to it. And when they leave, another 70,000 come. So you count the days now. Huh? And you see how many angels there are. Every day, 70,000. So you count how many days and you multiply them by 70,000. And there are still days to come until the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Besides the angels that have the, are assigned the duty about the hellfire, we have angels which are assigned the duties in paradise. So many angels who serve the people of paradise. They serve them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the least one in paradise receives his meal 
10,000 angels, each one carrying two meals, two types of meals. This is the least one in paradise. 10,000 angels, each one carrying two meals, two dishes. So this is only for one, one, one person in paradise. And this is the least one. And this is only for his meal. How about the other duties in paradise? Also, we have angels who, who are assigned to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ Those who carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ So we have those who carry the throne and we have those who are around the throne. وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ They all constantly glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying subhanallah, alhamdulillah ويؤمنون به and they have faith in Allah ويستغفرون للذين آمنوا and they ask Allah to forgive the believers ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمة وعلما فاغفر للذين تابوا this is how they supplicate to Allah O oh, our Lord O oh, our Lord your mercy has covered everything has encompassed everything and your knowledge also has covered everything. So forgive those who repent. These, this is the dua of angels. Rabbana. They say, oh our Lord. But the dua of the mushriks is not Rabbana. The dua of the mushriks is Ya Hussein, Ya Ali, Ya Abdul Qadir, Ya Badawi, Ya Shadili. Huh? But look, these are the pure servants of Allah. These are the pure worshippers of Allah, the angels. And not only the angels, the prophets in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Yunus alayhi salam when he was deep into the ocean in the middle of the stomach of a fish, a big fish, a big whale, 40 years. And then he said, Subhanaka. Glory be to you. Oh Allah. La ilaha illa ant. Inni kuntu min al-dhalimi. There is no one worthy of being worshipped except you. I was amongst those who have done injustice. So Allah answered his call. And he saved him from that hardship. Adam alayhi salam said, Rabbana dhalamna anfusana. Oh our Lord. We have done injustice to ourselves. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never said, Oh Allah, by the honor of me or by the, other, by the honor of Adam or by the honor of Ibrahim or by the honor of such and such, give us victory or do this to us or that. This is not the way the people who have faith in Allah do. Only those who do not Allah are the ones who say uh, by Hussein, by Ali, by uh, Muhammad, by uh, Badawi, by Abdul Qadir or something like this. This is shirk. This is great shirk. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about those who carry the throne of Allah. In Quran, there is a verse which says that on the day of judgment, eight angels will be carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ Eight angels. There is a hadith in which it says the, that the ones who carry the throne are four. But it doesn't say in the day of judgment. Therefore, some scholars said, if this hadith is true, because there is controversy about its authenticity. Some scholars say it's authentic hadith, and some scholars say, no, there is some weakness in the narration. But if it is true, then four 
are carrying the throne of Allah in this life when we are here now and eight on the day of judgment and this is how Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah go about compromising between the hadiths and the Quran and the hadith they don't take one hadith and reject the other they believe in everything which they think is true they believe in it and it's okay to compromise sometimes compromising does not mean uh, following falsehood or turning the truth no like here the verse says the ones who carry the throne on, the, on that day on the day of judgment are eight and the hadith doesn't say that day it just says the ones who carry the throne are four so we can say in light of this verse those four are in dunya now this is the way of Ahlul Hadith this is the way of Ahlul Sunnah also those who are assigned to the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they bring down the revelation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يُنَزِّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ بِالْرُوحِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ أَنْ أَنْذِرُوا أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاتَّقُوا Here, the revelation is called الروح, the soul, because it is the real soul. Anyone who follows the revelation of Allah, he is alive with the real soul. And then the kafir is dead. The kafir is actually dead. Why? Because he doesn't have the soul, the real soul, the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah is calling the revelation here the soul. And also, ar-ruh means Jibreel himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him ar-ruh. Allah says, نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ Quran was descended by Ar-Ruh Al-Amin. Al-Amin means the honest. Jibreel was called Ar-Ruh Al-Amin. One of those great angels is the angel Israfil. Israfil is the one who blows the horn. The horn is a container of all the souls. All the souls will be contained in this horn. So Israfil, when he is ordered by Allah to resurrect the people, he will blow the horn. So those souls which were gathered in that horn will spread going back in their bodies and they will come back again to life in the hereafter. وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ This is in Quran. When the horn is blown, فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ This is another blow, because uh, Israfil blows twice. After uh, Israfil blows this blow, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ No one will answer, because everyone will die, even the angels, even the angels. Except so the, يعني, as according to some hadiths, some very few things like the Hurul Ain in paradise and things like that. Other than that, everyone will die. No one will reply. Allah will reply Himself. Allah says, Liman al Mulk al Yaw. To whom belong the kingship, the kingdom today? No one will answer. So Allah says, Lillahi al Wahid al Qahar. To Allah the one and only the mighty that's why here it says illa man sha Allah yani everything will die except those who Allah willed for them not to be uh, vanishing or destroyed effects of faith in the angels the faith in the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must have great effect on the believers when someone knows how great they are, he knows, of course, how great is their creator. If, if this is the greatness of the angels, 
then how about the one who has created them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone knows that there are angels who are writing down everything that he says, everything that he intends, then he should be more careful, more watchful. Then he should not have any excuse in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone knows that the angels are constantly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he looks at himself only praying the obligatory prayers for example and fasting only one month or this he finds himself so much in shortage of worshipping Allah. Yani he compares himself to the angels he finds himself in great shortage in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Prophet sallam in ma said in matters of religion, don't compare yourself to someone who is below you. Compare yourself to someone who is far ahead of you. So that you compete. So that you reach his level. But in matters of life, compare yourself to the ones who are less fortunate than you. Don't compare yourself to the ones who have billions and trillions and zillions and whatever. Huh? Because if you compare yourself to the one who have mountains of gold and uh, billions of dollars, then you might say, I'm deprived. Why did Allah did not give me and this and that? You see? And this might lead to kufr. See? But if you compare yourself to the one who has less fortunate, who are less fortunate, you will praise Allah because at least you have something to eat, at least you have something to shelter, a house or whatever. Others are living outside, others are living without a meal every week, maybe. One week they cannot get a meal. So, therefore, to have faith in the angels that they are constantly worshipping Allah, constantly glorifying Allah, this should make us feel that we are in great shortage of obedience. And this is one of the great advantages of our faith in the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in Quran that nothing is hidden from him. We have to believe in this. But when we believe that angels are recording everything, this belief becomes stronger. It becomes more materialistic to us. It is enough for a believer to hear that Allah knows everything, hears everything, but it becomes better for him, stronger for his faith, to believe that there are angels which write down everything. And to uh, know the angels as mentioned in Quran and Sunnah leads to loving those angels. You have to love all worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how about if those worshippers are constantly worshipping Allah? They never get bored of worshipping Allah. They never lose any minute in that. So they deserve more of your love. And this love is an action you will be rewarded for. يعني if, 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 there is, if, if there was no advantage but this, look how much reward you get for this action. Because you are constantly in your heart doing this. You are loving the angels of Allah. And they are recording the reward for this love for the angels. You will be rewarded for loving all the faithful people. And if you love the angels the same way, this will be great reward for you in the day of judgment. So this, inshallah, يعني, will cover the uh, topic of the angels. هذا من فضل ربي ليبلوني 
أشكر أم أكفر ومن شكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن ربي غني كريم 